All right, welcome back to Techniques in 10, a series where we take a look at the fundamentals of various painting techniques in 10 minutes or less. Today we're gonna to be tackling plasma coils. I'm gonna show you three different ways to paint your plasma coils that can be used from tabletop all the way through to display. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get a timer and let's get into it. Okay, the paints you'll need today will be Rift Green, but you can substitute these with any other color or any other hue. Green Skin Flesh, Goblin Flesh, or any obnoxiously bright green, and Purity White. These are all from the Fantasy and Games range, but you can use any range that you want. So we're starting off with a dry brushing technique uh, to paint your power coils. So we're going to start off with a base of white just to cover everything and ensure that we have good saturation with our brightest color. This will likely take one or two passes, more than likely two or three to be honest, uh, to ensure you have good coverage. Then we're coming in with the goblin flesh and applying this all over, ensuring we get it into all of the recesses and get a very good saturated color built up. So again, this will take two or three passes just to ensure that you have good color. Now we're going to start dry brushing. Here I'm taking a small Artis Opus dry brush and working the green skin flesh over this. I'm aiming to hit all of the ridges and not in the recesses. Obviously there'll be a bit of cleanup after you're done with this. Coming in with some Rift Green on top of this, we're using it to catch the upper edges and the corners of the power coil. This is a super quick technique and allows you to get your power coils tabletop ready in no time at all. Just go back in, clean up those panels, paint your gun, and you're good. Now we're gonna try and do something similar to the Games Workshop way. So you wanna start off with a good coat of Rift Green just so you can establish a nice base. Coming in with some green skin flesh over the top of that. Again, looking to cover the top of the power coils entirely and build good saturation. And then on the side of the power coils, we wanna be highlighting the raised ridges. Aiming to start somewhere around like the halfway mark, three quarters of the way down and bring the color up towards the corner, building the saturation where we're gonna have the brightest points. This will likely take two or three coats, so repeat the process until you're happy with the saturation. Next, we're gonna come in with the goblin flesh and essentially repeat the process on the sides, catching from about halfway up, again, pulling the paint towards the top to ensure that we deposit most of the pigment at the corner. Again, this will take a couple of coats to ensure you get good saturation and good coverage from these greens. On the top of the power coils now we just want to be picking those raised ridges and leaving the green skin flesh in the recesses. Um, I find it easier just to draw over these but whatever works for you. Again taking a couple of coats to ensure I have good saturation and good coverage. Now we're coming in with purity white and I'm dragging this over about the last quarter up towards the corner again ensuring that I'm depositing the pigment where I want the brightest point to be. Just try and feather those out so the transitions aren't too harsh. And repeat the same process on the top, going from about a third of the way uh, out, or about a third of the coil out towards the edge. Next, we're coming in with some goblin flesh. I've thinned this quite a bit down towards a glaze or a filter consistency, and we're applying this all over the white to ensure that we have very strong saturation and high luminosity of the color. Again, you can apply multiple coats of this to ensure you have good coverage and you've built up a nice, strong, opaque color over that white base. So for the last highlight, we want to take some purity white and dot that along each of the corners. Last but not least, we're just going to apply a small filter or glaze of rift green from the middle of the coils down towards the casing of the gun. And this is pretty similar to what Games Workshop do on their box art. A bit of refinement and you'll have something that is heavy metal style. 
Now the last one we're going to cover here is probably my preferred way of doing power coils at the minute and seems to be the one that the community lean towards right now. Uh, we're, again we're starting off with a nice strong base of rift green and then we're coming in with our green skin flesh here and we're applying that where the coils meet the gun. This is going to be the brightest point on the model. After that we're ensuring that we get a lot of the riff or the goblin nope the green skin flesh in between each of the power coils so this time we're painting the recesses looking to get those sunken areas between each of the power coils getting again applying a nice even coat of green skin flesh into those areas as a lot of greens don't have super coverage um, whenever you get into the brighter tones this will take a couple of passes and you can see that I'm dragging the pigment towards the bottom where the power coils meet the gun as that's going to be the brightest point. So once you've done that it should sort of look a wee bit like this and I'll apply another couple of coats just to ensure I have good coverage. Now you can already see the effect kind of coming to life here where you see the you know the bottom of the gun where the coils meet the casing is the brightest area and now and you kind of get that glow effect. Now we're going to come in with our goblin flesh and repeat that process this time not going as high on those uh, recesses so we're only going from about three quarters of the way down two thirds of the way uh, and then down towards where the coils meet the casing. And ensuring we have a nice even coat uh, where the where the coils meet the case that's going to be the brightest area so ensure that you have nice saturation nice coverage in those areas again this will take a couple of passes so just repeat the process and ensure you build up that saturation and even at this point it would be very suitable to do this for tabletop or for any of your character models this will definitely suffice and now if you want to take it up a level i'm going to show you how you can do that we're going to start off introducing some white into this and this will really help to boost the saturation and boost the opacity of our goblin flesh. So again we want to start where the coils meet the casing of the gun and then introduce a small amount of white into each of the recesses just to brighten them up. Again depending on what white you're using you might need to do this in a couple of passes. Uh, some whites have better coverage than others. So you can already see how much brighter that looks and how much more intense the glow looks. We're using this to set the foundation for another filter layer or another pass of our goblin flesh. So again, just to ensure you have good coverage with your white, there's no patchy areas. And coming in with the goblin flesh, apply that all over the white in a filter layer. So this is thinned down to pretty much a glaze or further and we're applying that over the areas that we painted white. This just helps to boost the luminosity of the colour and gives you a more intense glow. So you can really see the difference that the white makes. It really intensifies the glow and intensifies the colour of the goblin flesh. This would look fantastic on any of your characters or even on some display pieces. But you want to take this even further? I got you. We're going to look at some tips and tricks on how you can elevate this even further. We're going to come back in with the goblin flesh and we're going to create another highlight point running along the corner of the power coils or the plasma coils. I know I've called them power coils the entire video, do not know why. And we're going to use this to create another point of contrast or another point of light. This just helps to intensify the glow and gives you more contrast. So you can already see the difference that that makes. Now if you want to elevate it even further you can come in with some fluorescent paints. They come in multiple forms, I just like the Dollar Rowney inks. So we're going to come back in with our Purity White and again establish a super bright base. So I'm focusing the highlight towards the centre of the of the plasma coil now to make it look like we're about to fire or there's just been fired, really intensifying the light in this area. And you can already see if you do this, it even intensifies the glow and looks really really nice. But adding the fluorescent paint on top of this just chef's kiss on top. Now we're going to apply the fluorescent green on top of this. We're applying this in a thin coat over the white to really intensify the colour. 
and this just really brings that glow to life. I think all three of these approaches work really, really well, depending on what it is you're looking to achieve. Personally, my favorite is the last one, and it's the one that I use on most of my pieces. Hopefully you find that useful. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You'll also get access to exclusive content and guides. I stream on Twitch if you want to come by and hang out, and we have a Discord where you can share your work and get involved with the community. All of the links can be found below in the description, but before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you at the next one. Thank you for watching.